You said you were bringing a modern edge to it on stage. What do you mean by that? I just mean that it's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. And the leader. If you're anything like me. This clip, or others like it, would have appeared all over your For You page on TikTok. The person in the clip is Rachel Zegler, and she is talking about the new live-action adaptation of Snow White, which will be coming out in 2024. Already, the film has got a lot of bad press, mainly from clips like the one you just saw. Many videos have come out criticising the way in which Rachel Zegler has handled the PR for the film. Putting it bluntly, Every day this film is slowly losing people's respect, or at least those who have seen it. Rachel Zegler's interviews have much to be desired in terms of promoting the film. This is a general theme in Hollywood and female characters, and has been for the last few years. But what is this trend, and how is it manifesting in this PR nightmare? Also, a quick note to say that no hate to Rachel Zegler, I'm not here to pile on to the already huge pile of hate for her at this point. She's putting forward an interpretation of the story. She's not necessarily trying to destroy the original 1937 film. The clips I'm showing are pulled out of longer videos, so the full context is not there, and keep this in mind. Pseudo-feminism, also known as performative feminism, is the actions or statements of individuals which on the surface seem like they support gender equality, but are not actually grounded in a belief in gender equality. Nehal Mishra, in her article discussing pseudo-feminism, asked the question, do pseudo-feminists really want equal treatment? No, they want to create a world governed only by women. Pseudo-feminists do not want equality at heart, but rather want to appear like they do. They believe women should have equality if they are worthy of it, not just across the board. A really good example of this is the not like other girls trope, which is found across all media. The general idea is that these girls are not feminine and like to eat and do what they want. This is mainly a reaction to the hyperfemininity of the 2000s, however it is rooted in misogyny. Women, if they are equal, should be allowed to dress and do whatever they want. However, the not like other girls trope actively puts down other women. Snow White itself perpetuates this. Zegler, in the now infamous interview with Variety, says that Snow White isn't going to be saved by the prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's going to be dreaming about the leader she knows she can be. She goes on to talk about how her late father told her she could become a leader if she remains true. On the surface, this is a fairly standard take on Snow White. Nothing about it is unusual or unique, it has been done before with many of the fairy tales. So what's the problem? The original character wanted to find true love. That was her goal in life, whereas this new Snow White wants to have a leadership role, wants to lead these people. The question that I had initially when I saw this interview is, why can't she do both? Well, a pseudo-feminist might say that a woman dreaming of true love is weaker. She should be dreaming of power and becoming a leader because that seems like a more feminist move. But not allowing women to fall in love is not feminist or making her seem like a more powerful character. In this statement, she's putting down three groups of women specifically. Firstly, the women who are fans of the original Snow White film from 1937. By implying that the film is so outdated and needs to be fixed, then all the fans are also outdated and need to find a new, better, feminist film. Secondly, any woman who wants to fall in love, which women are allowed to do, it's not girly or anti-feminist. Thirdly, any woman who doesn't want to become a leader, or just wants to exist in their own way. A really great part of the original is that whilst the people are trying to stop it, Snow White is just living and existing. That's her power. That's all she needs to live. But now, women are represented as always being a leader or a fighter. But this isn't exclusive to Snow White, and this is a widespread issue across Hollywood at the moment. Hollywood has always had an issue with writing women, mainly because it's a male-dominated space, but also now because of woke feminism and it doesn't really create realistic characters. Having a female character be the strongest in the room purely because she has no flaws is neither compelling or good for women. It gives an unrealistically high standard for women. No one, regardless of how they see themselves, is flawless. Therefore, the writers are alienating the female audience which they are trying to adhere to. Casting of the Disney live-action remakes are always controversial. 
When the Little Mermaid announced the leading star Halle Bailey, there was an uproar. Now the same thing is happening with Snow White, as Rachel Zegler is Latina, not white, which the original character was. I honestly have no issue with that. I understand some perspective on the issue, but I'm not going to get into that debate as it is a needless battle and I don't feel like it's my place to say. You'd think with this attitude to the main character, there would be great representation throughout the rest of the film, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Snow White is the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, so you'd think there would be representation for little people? But no. Disney has changed it to the seven magical creatures, which includes one little person. This is partially due to comments made by Peter Dinklage on Mark Moran's WTF podcast, mainly this statement. You're progressive in one way, and you're still making that fucking backwards story about seven dwarves living in a cave together. The day of this interview being published, Disney decided to consult members of the little people community. Then, the day after, they changed the story from the seven dwarves to the seven magical creatures. This has caused a lot of backlash, not just in the little people community, but many others have also pointed out the irony. Many little people have commented both on Disney changes and also comments made by Dinklage. Jason Acuna, better known as Wee Man, did a TMZ interview where he said, It's a bad thing. I don't, I'm not agreeing with it. One, because... What they're, what they're doing is pretty much you're, you're, you're replacing jobs that people could have as little people. Okay. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, it's for dwarfs, you mm -hmm. know? And Dylan Matt Postle, better known as Hornswoggle, also made a similar comment on Fox News. I mean, my biggest thing is, is, is uh, uh, he wants to be progressive, and, and it's all about progression. And I, I support that completely, but the issue is him being progressive is eliminating seven potential dream jobs right. from the dwarf acting community. And that's, it's, right. that's my issue here is he's saying he wants to move forward and, and do good for the community when this, these are dream jobs. Tara Jolais, star and producer of Little Woman LA, in an article by IndieWire, talks about how it's not right that one person, Peter Dinklage, is speaking for the whole community of little people. She goes on to comment, there's a severe downturn in roles being offered to under the guise of subverting stereotypes. Clearly, there is an issue here. Again, this is not exclusive to Snow White. Snow White and the Huntsman, which released in 2012, had characters of a regular height and use CGI to shrink them. Furthermore, Hugh Grant is playing an Oompa Loompa in the new Wonka film, releasing later this year. The problem here is that erasing little people from films and media and replacing them with CGI regular high actors does not fix the problem. The problem lies in the way in which writers write these characters. I understand that portrayals of little people in the past have often been stereotypical or othering in many aspects, but this is not a problem with the little person community in the slightest. It's the writers and the higher ups. They need to fix the stereotypes and consult not just one person, but many people in the community to create well-rounded, non-stereotypical characters who represent them well. Give the jobs to actors with dwarfism and stop using CGI to make regular actors smaller. The 1937 film was a monumental achievement for animation. Paul Wells, in the cinema book, comments how Snow White and the Seven Dwarves led to the acceptance of animation as a bona fide film form as well as a graphic art, a main attraction rather than a program filler. Essentially, without film, animation might just be exclusive to short program fillers that were never really fully fleshed out. It's so important to state how much this film impacted the animation industry. Rachel Zegler has not exactly been nice about the film. There are many memes talking about how Snow White hates Snow White. She claims she's honoured to play this role, however admitted that she'd only ever seen the film once before she started work on the film. She goes on to say that how the film was made 85 years ago and that it's outdated in women's roles of power. This is true to an extent. Yes, Snow White dreams of true love and cleans and cooks for the dwarves. The evil queen is vain and jealous. But also, she talks about leadership roles and power as if they are interchangeable, but in reality, you can be very powerful and not be in a leadership role. For example, Snow White has a lot of narrative power in that she dominates it. The film is about her. She drives the narrative forward. The prince appears for all of five minutes of screen time. Yes, he saves her at the end, but she is manipulated into eating the apple, making her appear more human and less flawless. Not everyone is immune to manipulation. We as the audience are aware that she is manipulated to create tension. However, it seems like these have been interpreted as weak. Don't get me wrong, is Snow White passive? Yes. 
but don't put the original film down in order to raise yours up just because there are different interpretations of the same story. I must conclude this video by stating that I don't think Rachel Zegler alone holds these views. In actuality, she would have been fed these criticisms by Disney themselves as they have yet to understand what women actually want in a film. I don't think that she deserves all the hate she is getting. She's 22 and has been in a handful of films before this point. I think this is a Hollywood problem, not an individual one. The hate for her is insane. People are calling her everything from someone to slurs. And honestly, it's just not what you want to see. But at the end of the day, everyone is entitled to their own opinion about Rachel Zegler. Aside from the use of slurs, of course. And the film itself. She just happens to be a mouthpiece for these misguided opinions that Disney is perpetuating. My main problem with the film actually falls into the Disney company itself. The film shows truly where their values lie, knowing actual equality and progression, but surface level progression. Just ticking enough boxes to not get completely axed, but sometimes that isn't enough. And I think that this outrage from fans and haters alike shows where the real issue lies.